The following presentation was recorded at the Buddhist Society of Victoria, Malvern East, Australia. Please visit our website at bsv.net.au. So, um, welcome as well from my side to the Monday meditation here at the Buddhist Society of Victoria. Do we have any people who are new to meditation, who are just coming for the first time? Oh, we do. Okay, very good. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for coming along. Um, so maybe, yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's a guided meditation anyway. But um, one of the important things with meditation in general is actually the relationship we have to what we are doing to the meditation object. The attitude that we have in our own minds. And um, also I've looked at the room and saw a few people who were here yesterday. So what usually happened for me, or happens for me, is that uh, I give the Sunday talk and I do have a bit of a topic that I talk about on that day. And it very, very often kind of informs what I talk about on Monday night as well. And it also kind of flows into the meditation that we do on Monday. So for the people who were here uh, yesterday in the morning or uh, who have listened to what I said, um, I was talking about uh, being with my mum in Switzerland um, for two and a half months, a little bit more than two and a half months before she passed away. And uh, also actually Roughly 10 years ago, my parents um, both died around the same time. I was also able to be with my father. And the relationship um, or the way we you know, communicated or we actually were together, I thought could be something that we could use in the meditation as well. So there will be a few more anecdotes. <laughs> I already had lots of anecdotes and, and stories yesterday about what happened. So both of my parents um, were in palliative care towards the end of their life. And with palliative care, the whole thing, you know, the whole ball, ball game really kind of changes around. And Ajahn Brahm has one of these beautiful sayings um, that he says in all the caring professions, they actually have the name of being a caring profession, that it is so important that we care that we don't get too carried away with the idea of having to cure. Of course, it's wonderful if we can cure. It's wonderful if healing can happen. And I think even the word healing already is something different from curing. And the other approach there, which is very important is as well, that when we forget the caring, then there is often also much less likelihood of healing and of a cure able to be happening there. So, you know, I went to Switzerland and I tried, <laughs> as we all do, to be with my parents as well as I could. But of course, even there were moments in the period of time that we could share together, that we could spend together, where I wasn't just there, where I wasn't just appreciating what was going on, where I had a certain agenda in my mind, where I, you know, wished well, but maybe didn't do that in the most skillful way. And as I said before, in palliative care, you are encouraged much, much more to think about the well-being of the other being much, much more about how can you alleviate even the word itself Palliative comes from the word, um, it's like a mantle or it's like something you're putting around a being to make it feel at ease, to make it feel comfortable. But then all those ideas come into your mind that kind of play with that idea. For example, the eating. You know, I appreciated the time of being with my mom and eating with her. But sometimes <laughs> it's like the roles were turned around and the son was now saying, mother, you have to eat your vegetables. She didn't actually want to eat any vegetables at all anyway. But not just the vegetables, just the eating in general. That there was an idea that I felt, you know, this is, this is really important now. Or this should be happening in my kind of schedule 
or now when I'm here, <laughs> and now when they're serving the food. But more and more, uh, when, I, uh, when I was able to kind of attune, tune into what was happening with her, um, the meal times shifted. And sometimes I also realized that it was okay if she didn't want to eat, that she didn't have to eat at that time. And that sometimes even the eating, especially when it gets towards the end of life, when uh, the dying process is happening fairly slowly, then um, food is actually not something which is helpful for the system. So just to kind of learn these lessons. And also with language and with trying to care for another, another person, I've realized how limited that sometimes is or how difficult I found it to put some things into words and um, to try and convey um, a feeling and that it was so much more helpful sometimes to just be quiet and to actually feel and to be with another being and to kind of convey those feelings that way than uh, complicating things with language, complicating things with concepts. The kind of um, example that came to mind um, for me was my mom had quite a bit of fear towards the end of her life. Well, not just towards the end, end of her life. It was actually a companion for her for a long, long time. And it was an, a habit which was quite strongly ingrained. And of course, you wish to take that fear away from another being, but how can you do that in the best way? In a way that you really reassure them. And language just didn't quite cut it, <laughs> you know, so sometimes I would be sitting by her bedside and realizing, you know, that stress was arising and that she was becoming a bit more restless or whatever it was, or when she could even oh, speak still quite well, where we could communicate with language. And I was trying to, you know, tell her, oh, mom, <laughs> you, you, you don't have to be afraid. I am here. And she was quite frank sometimes towards the end. <laughs> and she would just kind of turn around to me and say, this is of no use. This doesn't help. And I was kind of taken aback um, in the beginning. And I said, well, but I mean, if that is really the case, is it better if I leave? And she said, no, 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 no. <laughs> so probably she was just trying to communicate or to say how difficult it was for her because there was a strongly established habit. And even if there was someone there who was trying to express uh, the caring language, that it still was difficult, that it still wasn't really working. And with time, I realized that it was actually much, much more skillful for me to just be there without expressing it in words and be there without fear myself. And then wishing, if that is possible, that she might maybe also be able to drop that fear at some stage or be at peace be at ease with the process that was unfolding. Of course, I wasn't a person dying, so it's a bit easier for me to say that. But still, being together with someone who goes through this process is not so easy either at times. But there were times where I was able to do that. And I hope I was also able to kind of convey that just by me being there. And that reminded me of the other thing that happened with my father as well. <laughs> you know, you kind of have certain phrases that you get used to. Um, um, how you, you know, you could maybe even call them mantras that are happening in your mind. And um, when I was um, caring for my dad, I mean, both of them were, were in a care home. So um, I didn't have to, you know, do that part so much. Sometimes, of course, I would a little bit as well. But it was really the job just to be there. And one of those days, you know, where it wasn't the best day or whatever, and I've just taken him to the toilet and we were coming back. And um, I guess he was just saying that it, he didn't feel so well. And my natural reaction <laughs> was just to say, uh, 
okay, okay. <laughs> and I think I must have used that phrase quite a lot because that's one time when he turned around and told, told me, oh, you Buddhists, <laughs> you always say it's okay. It's not okay. <laughs> And I don't know if I actually answered, okay. <laughs> or if I said, it's okay that it is not okay. We always ex expect um, the ways to turn out how we have it in our own minds. We expect them to be perfect. And when they're not perfect, we're kind of lost. We don't know how to deal with it. We don't know how to respond to it. We don't know how to just be, how to accept. And that is this beautiful concept of loving kindness, of unconditional love. Because if there is a conditionality in there, if that is kind of in the equation, then it's like a business deal. Or then it's actually, you know, trying to force or trying to achieve something. And if we can find that other way to really, really just be with another person and have acceptance and have love, then we realize that things sometimes can really turn around. So I was hoping that we could use a little bit of those things that I said now as well. Um, in our meditation that we will be doing together. So usually we give a short introduction for about 15 minutes or so. Then we sit together for 45 minutes and there is a bit of guidance in the beginning um, to, you know, get you into the meditation mood. <laughs> and then you take it away by yourself. It will be, um, I will be silent, I will be quiet uh, for the rest of the meditation. And then at the end, we do have also about 15 minutes for people if they wish um, to ask any questions or if they would share, uh, would like to share any of the experiences they have or comment. Also now with the guided meditation, again, I will be offering some phrases. I will be offering some words. But as well here, I don't want to have an agenda <laughs> to tell you what you have to do. It's really just an encouragement to see if that resonates with you, if that kind of makes sense, what I'm saying. But if there is better words in your own mind or in your own heart to create that feeling of unconditional love, of unconditional okayness, like what I, I guess, tried to say to my mom when I'm trying to put it in words, it's okay, mom, I love you. It's okay, mum. I'm at peace. May you be at peace as well. Okay, but first things first, we have to take care of our bodies as well and make sure that they're in a comfortable position. So let's do that because we were sitting for a little while already. And also know that during the meditation process, you don't have to sit straight and have to sit, you know, a determination kind of thing. I sit like this and I'm not going to move for 45 minutes. If it is kind to move, if you feel that your body is asking you to move, then please do so. Please adjust also during the meditation. But when we take care of our bodies in the beginning, then we will realize that they feel comfortable and that they don't have to be moved. Moving also includes, you know, scratching and coughing and all these kind of things. Especially towards the beginning of the meditation. I've already closed my eyes and the lights have already been dimmed. So I encourage you also to close your eyes if that is something you feel comfortable with. And if not, you can just, you know, have them half shut or just have a soft gaze in front of you.
And as we have our eyes closed, that will give us the opportunity to get in touch with our bodies. That's usually the first meditation object that we relate to. And also here, in meditation, we don't really think if it's not necessary. We don't form words and concepts. What we do instead is we feel. We listen. We love. We respond in a kind way. Then what we usually do in our tradition is we do a sweep through the body to spend a bit of time with each body part and to see if we can make it comfortable so that the body part by part can relax and be at ease. And the body relaxes and is at ease when we have the right attitude, the right relationship. So allow your awareness to go down to your feet and just rest there for a while. Be open receptive, listen and feel. And then as I try to suggest with the anecdotes with my mom and with my dad, don't have any agenda. Don't ask your feet to be like this or to be like that. See if you can just say, it's okay feet. <coughs> However you are feet, I simply care for you. If there is anything I can do to make you feel more comfortable, great. 
But if I can't reach with moving, with shifting, that's okay. And as we are developing the right attitude, the right relationship, listen and feel and see if something shifts. To more ease, to more relaxation. And then we move up to our ankles. Gently resting our attention there. And allowing them to be Allowing them to rest as well. (coughs) And then we can slowly move upwards to the lower parts of our legs. The calves, the shins. Simply being there. listening and caring. And then we can let go of that part and move further up to our knees. If we find any tension, let's make sure that we don't get all wound up about it. It's okay, we can just allow the tension to be there. Watching it, but not feeding it with negativity or force. But allowing it to be with care.
Then we can move further up to the thighs. Big muscles that have to work a lot. And we can just allow them to rest. Don't need to work right now. They can have a little holiday. You can't quite relax, that's okay. Just allowing them the space to be and to do what they need to do. <laughs> and then we can move to our bottom. Feel if it's comfortable sitting on the chair or on the mat. And if not, trying to see if we can somehow Move a little bit, balance it a little bit. So it feels at ease and can rest. Realizing that we don't have to do anything. We don't even have to tell those muscles what to do. Gravity takes care of the job. And from there, we can allow our spine to grow upwards towards the light, like a plant grows upwards towards the light. not pulling it or pushing it, but giving it the light of kindness. Nourishment of it's okay. Nourishment of love. so it can grow all by itself.
grow and unfurl from the hips up towards the torso all the way to the head. naturally reaching to the light. And then let our awareness rest with our internal organs for a while, with the whole digestive tract. All the bits and pieces in our belly. You might feel a bit tense or a bit tired. No problem, that's okay. Our job is not to change anything. Our job is just to be aware and to be kind, accepting and loving. And then we can move upwards to the area of the chest. Let's stay in the inside for a while, where we have our respiratory system. The lungs. that are filled with air all by themselves, stretching and making room and relaxing again, letting go. It's okay, lungs, you can breathe at the speed and at the depth that you need to breathe at this time. You have my permission to breathe by yourself. (laughs) 
And then as our lungs breathe, they bring in fresh oxygen, which then goes through our heart and into our whole system. Brings energy and wakefulness. But it also takes away the waste products, the things that we can let go of, that we don't need anymore. And brings them through the blood, into the lungs and then out. Natural exchange. Energy going in and of what we don't need going out. And then also just allowing this whole area of the chest to just be open and relaxed. Allowing our mind to rest, to be with our shoulders. Another spot which is often tense. getting in touch, resonating with the shoulders. Deeply feeling into the shoulders. And dropping any agenda, dropping any interference. It's okay, shoulders. I accept you as you are right now. You don't have to change. I allow you to just be as you are. And from the shoulders we can move into the arms, left and right. moving down over the skin, but also feeling the muscles and the bones from the inside out.
being at peace with that part of the body. Allowing it to be at ease as well. And then moving across the elbows. Solid part on the outside, the soft part on the inside. Deeply caring and feeling into it. And then also into our lower arms. The skin, the muscles, the bones, the sinews. Accepting them as they are. Allowing them a moment of peace, a moment of rest, of having to do stuff. And then moving further to our wrists, and from the wrists into our hands. The palms, the backs, and the fingers. Feeling whatever is there. Maybe we don't feel anything. Maybe it feels pleasant. Maybe it feels unpleasant. All of the above are okay. Our job is simply caring.
allowing, loving, And then let us move up to our necks. Remembering the plant from before, which is gently unfurling and stretching. so that the head is in perfect balance. Not the way we think, but allowing it to balance itself out. To find place to rest and be at ease. And then connecting and feeling around the head, sides, with ears at the top and the back. Allowing all that skin to just be. And also allowing our brain, that we can't really feel, but that is working so hard. Now it can just rest. No demands of your brain at this time. Nothing to figure out. No demands to be met. Giving it a break. And then last but not least, our face. 
we carry so much tension in our faces. Triggered by our emotions. Allowing our eyes to be Just resting in the sockets. We're not seeing anything right now. We're only feeling And then also the nose and the cheeks. Just hanging out. Being at ease in their presence and allowing them to relax. And then the jaw and the lips. It's okay if you find some tension here. See if you can be at ease and at peace with whatever you find around your jaw and around your lips. Just kind of handing over, saying, Jaw and lips, whatever you need to do, it's fine. Go for it. And then we can feel our whole body. Whatever is going on in that space.
and allowing it to be. As it allows us to be. By relating to the body in a nice way, in a kind way, we also relax our minds. The movement of the mind tends to slow down. Tensions in the mind tend to relax. But again, the same here, whatever we find in our mental world, let's see if we can just hang out with it. With as much acceptance and care as we can muster. Let you sit quietly for the rest of the meditation. Please remember our job is not to change things. But to be kind. to be accepting, to be soft.
as we are slowly moving towards the end of the meditation, let's check in again with our mind and with our body. Let's see if the tension has increased or decreased. The peace and the relaxation have deepened or not. What did we do or didn't we do, which worked or didn't work? There's no such thing like a bad meditation. There's always something to learn. And even if we had a great time and we consider it a good meditation, even here we can learn Learn how to relate in a more skillful way. Not tensing around tension. Not getting excited around the things when it works out. when it is peaceful. I'll be ringing the bell three times to end the meditation. Please listen to the ringing of the bell and allow it to take you back into your body, back into this room. Okay. Now is usually the time if people have questions or comments. But very often in the room <laughs> it's quiet after the meditation, but if someone has a question, please put up your hand. I think we have a microphone. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's right, sometimes <laughs> our legs have to wake up again. <laughs> Thank you for that meditation. 
Is the idea uh, with meditation to try and um, observe your body as if you're not in it and so you can like see your body relaxing but also you see all those running thoughts and you just let them go? Mm. I mean, the job in meditation is to not get involved in things. So maybe if that's what you're describing, because what I try to kind of yeah, point towards in the beginning is that very often when we relate even to another person, we have so many ideas in our minds how things should be, and we force and that actually has a bad um, influence of the other, on the other person. And it works the same way in meditation. So the body is one of our meditation objects, and it's usually the first one, because it's a bit more coarse that we focus on. And it's also one of the objects which is the best to learn, because you get um, quite good feedback from it. So you can actually see if you are getting involved. <laughs> and we just want to make sure that we are feeding the right thing. So if we are feeding the tension with negativity or with fear, then it becomes stronger. So we are tensing around the tension <laughs> rather than allowing it to be and allowing it to dissipate and to relax all by itself. So it happens when we don't get involved. <laughs> so that's why even the word trying, <laughs> we don't try. <laughs> we just kind of step back. We allow relaxation to happen. We allow letting go to happen. You can't let go. You can let go of doing, <laughs> but you can't actually let go. That's the tricky part. And then when we do that with the body, when we learn that with the body, then it mirrors in the mind and we already calm down the mind, we already relax the mind by being with the body in the right way. But it's our next meditation object as we stay in meditation for longer and go deeper into more subtle areas, where you can imagine that your thinking, your emotions, um, the movement of, of your mind is a little bit like a body that has tensions in it, that has tight spots in it. And depending how you relate to it, it gets more tense or it gets less tense and relaxes and is more at ease. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. But very often meditation is taught in a way that, you know, you have a certain technique and you just follow the technique and then that's what meditation is. <laughs> but we are actually developing a relationship to any meditation object that will arise down the track. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have one more or do, do you want to do an online or how do we usually do? Do we go back and forth? We usually alternate. Yes, yeah. Ajahn. Okay. Um, so here we give the microphone I'll to you I'll just check afterwards. if there are any online questions. Sure, please. If anyone is listening online, apologies if the uh, yeah, the audio has been dropping in and out a little bit, unfortunately. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Tonight, the internet connection has not been uh, completely stable. But what we'll do is we'll um, just upload the version that we've recorded here. All right. And so that will be uh, continuous and you'll be able to come back and uh, experience the full meditation without any problems. <laughs> That's right, and you will hear the, the alarm of the car which went off. <laughs> you just can't, you know, that's that's the whole point of this thing. You, it's not perfect. <laughs> so if we can even practice with these things and be okay with these things, then it's working. Yes, please. Like the, the car horn that was going off, Ajahn, yes. Uh, but uh, no question. Uh, no questions online at this point. Oh, okay, cool. Good. Yep, please. So we have another one from the floor. Or also, I mean, comments are fine as well. Thank yes, please. You for the teaching. Um, if the body has a tension that habitually mm. returns, mm. Um, 
because as you said, you, you're looking at the body, feeling the body and the tensions occur, then so one could call that suffering yes. in some way. Yes. So therefore, when you have a resistance, that natural resistance all the time which keeps it in its place, mm. doesn't move if you're resisting. Mm. So did I hear you say you can't do anything about the resistance? You might have, you, you see it intellectually and you say, I'm accepting this, here yes. comes attention. Yes. Which could be habituatedly formed. However, I want to let go of the resistance. <laughs> and then but, you're resisting the resistance. Exactly, because there is wanting. So the whole yeah. point of meditation, another way of saying what letting go is, is letting go of wanting. Wanting to change things, wanting even good things. <laughs> the wanting is the problem. <laughs> so we are um, finding ways to let go of that wanting and to allow the body to, you know, if it is tense, to have that tension and say, okay, you know, this tension has now built up over, over a long period of time and it's always in this, this area of my body, but can I relate to it in a different way? And one of the ways, if there is something which is quite known to you, is to, to greet it, to welcome it, and to say, hello, pain, or hello, whatever it is. I, I know you. <laughs> You're like an old friend. I can feel at ease around you, because I know you. I've experienced you many times. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to tense around you. And then another way is to just, while you are being with it, if it's not too overwhelming, to just be curious and to be interested where it actually is in the body, how big it is, what kind of shape it has. And then what I often like to do is to mentally imagining that I'm giving whatever shape it has, whatever tension it kind of has, to give it space. Because what we usually do is we kind of tense around that mm. shape with our mind. Mm. And that's what creates um, its solidity. But if we somehow manage, I mean, I'm just using words and similes, but if we sa manage to have it drop into water and dissolve, or if we have the ability to kind of just stretch it so it's still the same amount of pain, <laughs> but because the density it had and the density we created with our relationship towards it softens, then it also relaxes and feels softer and more bearable. I mean, that's one, one, uh, one way. Another way is that we, uh, when we realize it's too much, that we just stay with that area in the body for a little while and, you know, try to be as accepting and loving as we can <laughs> and then just move on and use other areas that might be easier and then you can come back later. Or you can sometimes also spread the relaxation and the ease that you have in one part of your body to other parts of your body and they kind of can shine out and radiate out into those corners where there is some tension. So you can also start from the other end. But, I mean, these are all tools and ways that you have to investigate for yourself and see if something works. actually works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Because you, you, do, you do feel mm. when it works. And that's where, where we learn from. Um, also, I mean, one thing that is quite important and that's usually the first step we have this idea of how we should be sitting and how meditation looks like and that we have to meditate in a certain position uh, someone got up and did a bit of walking meditation good on you they felt now is not the right time for sitting now my body needs a bit of movement great move um, sometimes we might find out that a bit of walking meditation, a bit of yoga, 
puts our body into a certain state where we can kind of pick it up from and go more relaxed into meditation. Fine. So, um, yeah, or also sometimes we feel our body is slumped and we wouldn't allow it to slump. We say, you are not allowed to slump, meditation has to look this way. Let it slump for a while, let it do its thing for a while. And once it's gotten what it needs, then it relaxes. So we very often deny our body, deny ourselves, deny other people to do what they need to do. We just don't know. We assume, but we don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Not in here. Online. Maybe we have time for one question if there is one. In, uh, nothing online. Is there, are there any more questions in the room? I think that's all good. Okay, thanks a lot for coming along. Ajahn, I'd just like to thank you again for sharing your stories and your insights from your recent experience with your mother and before that with your father. Mm. We're very fortunate to have you here sharing those insights and I'm going to give a quick plug if I may oh, Ajahn gosh. if you have enjoyed tonight's meditation um, Ajahn Bodhidharma has a, an online community where he leads meditation uh, sure yes and um, we also have a meeting once a month a meeting together a with Bhante Chunda so it's not just me <laughs> so there, there, um, you can look up it's called relax and grow uh, it's on YouTube and also, I think you can probably just... Oh, is that the best way to... Yes, yes, yeah, usually. So if you go yeah, and look yeah. up and then Relax if you and Grow... Find one of the retreats there. There is a homepage and you can, um, uh, you know, sign up for the newsletter. Yeah. Thank you. If that's something you would like to do. <laughs> and right. I usually also stay back if someone has a question uh, that they don't feel comfortable asking in the group. Uh, they can come up and ask afterwards. Okay, have a safe journey back home.